Hi, and welcome to Thor's Day Comics. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee, and Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, The Adventures of Adam Starr and the Solar Legion. I'm also the author of Witchman, a new superhero comic book which recently had a successful Kickstarter campaign. Thor number 139, To Die Like a God. Great cover, evoking the Galactus cover of Fantastic Four, our new heroic couple Thor and Sif in action with Oracle looming over them. And um, an interesting detail, Thor's carrying a hammer and so is Sif. His and her hammers. The mighty Thor to die like a god. The hammer of Thor has been captured by the now departed trolls. Less than 60 seconds remain before the god of thunder will be transformed back to the mortal Don Blake. Unless... Do not despair, mighty one. We shall yet prevail. Know you that Sif will never leave thy side. Now, with Asgard besieged by the deadliest of foes, with my power needed most, I am bereft of my hammer, reduced to impending helplessness. A peerless pictorial pageant painstakingly produced with perfectly pardonable pride by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Inked with the prowess of Vince Coletta, lettered with the pen points of Sam Rosen, whatever else you do, we ask you to promise that you'll read this stirring saga slowly by the golden gates of Asgard. It's just too good to finish quickly. And Thor hears a subway train roaring down and realizing that within seconds he's going to turn into the powerless Donald Blake and, and be utterly useless in this time of Asgard's greatest peril as it's losing the troll war. Asgard is losing its war with the trolls. Rather shockingly, um, this Marvel comic superhero Thor chooses suicide as, as the only option. Stand aside, female. Get thee to safety against yonder wall. The 60th second is almost upon me. The time is now. But if you change to mortal form, the vehicle will slay you. Aye, that is my only hope. Though I shall die as the mortal Don Blake, mayhap I shall reach Valhalla as Thor, god of thunder. And once there amongst the gods, who knows what miracles may yet occur. No, the odds against thee are too great. If thou hast guessed wrong, Odin loses thee forever, and so, alas, does Sif. There is another way, my way. For am I not a goddess born? Remember, only upon earth dost thou lapse back to human form without thy hammer. And so she sends them both back to Asgard, where he is. He can safely remain Thor without his hammer, which I don't think has ever been, this loophole has never been addressed before in an issue. This, this is new. And the way it plays out in Jack's border notes on the original art, it's even more intense a sequence, because in the dialogue, he kind of has an out that like, oh yeah, if he dies there's like a chance that he'll go to Valhalla where uh, Asgardian gods do. And then once he's there, he's at least on Asgardian soil and can somehow sneak in. Somehow the convoluted nature of this plan makes it seem less like a, a suicide attempt, makes it seem less severe. But in Jack's liner notes, Thor is talking about, like, he doesn't have any kind of plan worked out. He just says he's going to kill himself. The, the focus really seems to be on uh, this sort of, you know, failure and, and despondency that's leading him to, to sort of kill himself in some sort of military ritual, like, you know, like a samurai or something. And Sif, and you can kind of see it on her face here, um, in the words here, you know, she's not really judging Thor for his decision to kill himself. She's kind of like telling him, no, there's another way. You know, you're too valuable. Let me save you. But in Jack's liner notes, she talks about she's kind of like disgusted by Thor's self-pity. It's, it's, it's a really interesting, frankly, odd moment uh, in, in this story. And, and I mean, I'm assuming, you know, these edits that, that come in the dialogue are Stan's edits and, and sort of putting on his edit, editor hat brought it back within, you know, the bounds of something that is really permissible in a comic. This was the first time I really, uh, you know, read the liner notes for this, and I was kind of, you know, struck by them. Uh, Jack's liner notes say, She's never been to Earth, but growing sound makes her uneasy. 
Thor senses Odin needs him, but is powerless to get to him. Besides, Thor is too ashamed to face him anyhow. Subway train is coming into sight. He makes up mind to die. Thor says, Odin will get you back to Asgard. He faces onrushing train. He says, I can never go back. Not without my hammer. It's a genuine suicide attempt. It's not convoluted superhero, pseudo-science, pseudo-mysticism, split-second solution, you know, possible solution to, to this puzzle, to this problem he finds himself in. He really is, he's, he's feeling deep shame about losing his hammer and he's just gonna kill himself. Sif gestures, she's still a goddess, an angry goddess who cannot stand self-pity. This is an intense moment. She has power and uses it. She says, the thing to do is get your hammer back. It's very different. Maybe this is an edit that Stan and Jack did together. Maybe it's a discussion they had. But I mean, my my instinct is telling me that, uh, you know, this is Stan's editorial. And I mean, it's, it's incredibly interesting and incredibly different to have, you know, like a Marvel character um, actually you know, contemplating suicide, but it just seems so far uh, out of bounds and it really hit me reading this. I'm still trying to, you know, kind of wrap my head around it. But in any case, he turns it into, um, you know, more sort of, you know, typical superhero stuff, kind of burnishes the edges off of it. I can't see sending the, the original version of this out to press. I mean, this is not the grim and gritty 80s. This isn't a, uh, a Vertigo book or something just really stands out as, as a sort of like a moment apart from, from really anything I've seen in, uh, you know, Jack Kirby's, his superhero comics up to this point and his comics up to this point, you know, and, and evidence that he was working on sort of deeper themes. But again, maybe it was just a sort of plot contri a momentary plot contrivance to him. Maybe it wasn't meant to, uh, resonate in the way that it that uh, it's you know resonating as as i'm reading this in 2024 uh, sif teleports them to asgard and more specifically they teleport to the asgardian underworld to the heart of the troll domain underground and so now it's dungeons and dragons you know they're in this underground cave in enemy territory uh the trolls are carrying you know superheated uh molten metal that they're using to to build these weapons weapons such as mine eyes have never beheld whose was the brain that did conceive such awesome alien instruments of doom you know these old gods are confronted with the weapons of new gods and we cut away to asgard which is being demolished invaded by this troll army the all-powerful Odin is taking a beating. We do not fight the trolls alone. Some mystic power doth furnish them aid. In weaponry we be not their equals. Now only the power of Odin, only the might of Thor may save the day. But with the fruit of Asgard assembled, the thunder god doth not appear. Truly the heart of Odin is sorely troubled. The worst of it to Odin is that Thor is nowhere to be seen in Asgard's darkest hour. The Asgardians are completely outclassed by the weapons of the of the trolls. They're in bad shape, but Odin still got some tricks up his sleeve. He's got his staff, which can which is sending these this rain of fireballs. But then they fire with another super weapon created by Oracle, which sucks all the magic out of Odin's staff. And now it's just you know a useless hunk of metal. He throws it away. Onward, Asgardians, where Odin leads, let honor now follow. So a pretty cool moment. You know, they're they're facing impossible odds, but, but Odin's going to lead them. Um, you know, maybe this is the final battle of Ragnarok. And, you know, there's all those uh, prophecies about Ragnarok, but maybe the form that Ragnarok takes is going to be something completely unforeseen. So now we cut back to Thor and Sif, and we see what Sif was... Uh, remarking about and what she's remarking about is she sees that Yulik has Thor's hammer and using the magic of Oracle well they've duplicated the hammer so now there's two hammers but Thor still has his hold on Mjolnir he draws it to his hands like uh, you know Luke drawing his lightsaber and the battle is on champion versus champion hammer versus hammer and it's it's a pretty cool clash. This kind of storyline gets repeated again and again, you know, making duplicates of Captain America's shield. But, you know, here it is. Sif is holding her own fighting. They're fighting back to back in a similar composition was used 
in the um, the issue where Sif makes her debut, Garador is uh, barking orders to Oracle to destroy Thor once and for all. They got their backs up against the wall, a rain of, of spears and arrows, and Thor smashes the wall, and what's revealed is the chamber of Oracle. Oracle, who is this uh, great mind, this uh, who can see into the future, and, and you know this, this being of power who is trapped by these lesser beings, the trolls, who are making him, you know, create wonders for him. And I do wonder if there's some autobiography going on here for Kirby, that if maybe Kirby sees himself as Oracle, as this, as this giant, as this uh, protean font of never-ending creativity that's being sort of, you know, wasted and, and, and being, you know, serving the, the needs and the demands of lesser imaginations. And Ulick follows them in. Uh, the battle continues, but Ulick runs to this machine. He's gonna he's gonna turn those flames up to full power and uh, incinerate Oracle. But Thor bops him. Thor lets Oracle free in exchange for a promise to leave and never return. And you don't need to tell him twice. He's out of there back to, you know, his, his far distant dimension. Uh, you know, losing their secret weapon, the secret of their success. We cut back to, uh, you know, the capital city of Asgard, which I guess is also called Asgard. Um, and we see the, the trolls are on the, on the run. Uh, you know, they've lost, they've lost their magic, lost their mojo with the departure of Oracle. And, you know, they're victorious, but Odin, says, you know, his one disappointment is that in this victory that Thor wasn't able to be part of it. But this uh, tunnel, this you know, proto-boom tube where the trolls retreated into, uh, they see someone coming up there, and it's Thor and Sif, and they hold the surrender of King Garador. The war is ended. A great climax, a, a great ending to one of the all-time great storylines in Thor, the Troll War. Legendary, legendary. Father, how stands Asgard? The realm endures, my son, as doth my pride in thee. So be it. It's not going to be the same after this. The series is going to go back to sort of, you know, superheroics as usual. And we can discuss that in the next issue. A new enemy on Earth. And now we have Tales of Asgard, the secret of the Mystic Mountain. And, uh, you know, we get deeper into the kingdom of Mogul and his Mystic Mountain, his Crystal Mountain, and... Uh, you know, the, the Warriors 3 approach, they see it on their screen there. Uh, he gets his Ginny Devil ready to, to intercept these interlopers. Hogan is, is angry as ever. These, uh, you know, Mogul is the guy who destroyed, you know, who murdered his people. And, and he's looking for revenge. They're at the spot where the Mystic Mountain is supposed to be, but it's just a flat, endless plain. Where is this Mystic Mountain? And Thor hammers at the ground and reveals uh, what's underneath, and and they they see you know clearly now through through there that that it's it's an underground mountain, it's an upside down mountain. It's uh, this city Xanadu is uh, embedded in a massive stalactite in this plane of glass that's you know covered by a layer of of soot. Uh, again, talking about Oracle and Oracle's protean imagination, Kirby is going full blast. He is producing some of the greatest work of his career, throwing out new worlds, new universes, new characters, and the, that that well is about to dry up really fast in 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 just a few issues. So so something's going on, and and uh, to find out more, you can read my book, Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, to find out, you know, what kind of issues Jack was dealing with, why he felt the need to, you know, hold back on this, you know, natural creativity of his, just just in in, in the interest of self-protection. Hogan wants to just smash his way there, smash his way through this, this thick glass barrier, but then they don't need to because the door sealing it opens up and inside is the Ginny Devil ready to fight. Next, the battle begins. This is the last Tales of Asgard epic. There's, you know, a few more chapters left to go on it, but it's 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 going to go out with a bang, just like the Troll War had had, you know, a great finish to it. 
Tales of Asgard and this, um, you know, Xanadu sequence is going to end really beautifully. And there's even uh, an epilogue to, to the Troll War at the beginning of the next issue. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee, and Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, The Adventures of Adam Starr and the Solar Legion. I'm also the author of Witchman, a new superhero comic book, which recently had a successful Kickstarter campaign. I'll see you next Thursday.